Hello everyone and welcome to Unity of Command. This is the DLC Black Turn and I'll explain in a moment why we start with this one. But first a few words about this game. Um, it's a one-man project, it was cre designed created by one person. Um, it's a turn-based strategy on a hex map set on the eastern front of World War II. So, um, parallels with the famous Panzer General, Panzer General or Panzer Corps series, the, its remake, are inevitable. Um, and at first glance, it, it, will be a, it will be very similar. Uh, you know, the hex grid and the units and everything else. At uh, first look, it, it looks like a copy-paste. However, this game is quite different, whereas the main focus of the Panzer General and Panzer Corps series was, to, uh, was on army composition and uh, unit management and um, gathering experience. Here, the main focus is on supply, which took a secondary role um, in that game. So basically you can say that all the elements are there, different units, uh, experience, uh, entrenchment, um, terrain, weather, supply, they, they, is, they are all present in both of these series, but, but here they, they are the focus lies elsewhere and this creates a, a much more different, a much different uh, gaming experience overall. So as you can see, I've managed to create uh, to complete the whole campaign uh, of the Black Turn campaign. This is a DLC. The original game, the base game, uh, focuses on the Stalingrad campaign from both sides. And um, there are two DLCs, one, uh, the Black Turn, that is uh, basically Operation Barbarossa, uh, 1941's uh, German or Axis invasion of the Soviet Union. And the other one is the Red Turn, that is the Soviet uh, campaign to, uh, to reconquer their territory and to capture Berlin <coughs> from 1943 to 45. Um, and the reason we're starting with here is because I want to play all the, the campaigns and scenarios in a chronological order. So hopefully I'll play through everything. This is the current stand as of this recording, but I want to play through the Soviet side as well. And there are a few uh, standalone scenarios as well apart from the campaign. So I want to, to show you everything the game has to offer. As you could see from the title, this um, means we are playing brilliant victories. We are getting brilliant victories on all the maps, um, which is very hard to do in some cases and requires a lot of restarts. There is no safe system, so you cannot save scum, but you can restart uh, the, the sen different scenarios anytime you wish and any amount of times you wish. Um, and, uh, and I don't spend any prestige points, which is your currency. Um, which makes it even more difficult. Um, anyway, um, this is, as I've said, only the first campaign. And uh, um, let's begin. The first map is Army Group North. Here is Group North. Uh, there are three maps which start at the same time. Uh, on the same day, on the, the day of the, the, the operation, so June the 22nd, 1941. And uh, I played through from whenever there was, there was a, um, um, whenever several scenarios took place at the same time or started at the same time, I played through them from north to south, so no special uh, order. And uh, yeah. Let's dig in. The description says, Army Group North is tasked with clearing the Baltic states of Soviet forces. A quick advance to Pskov is essential to secure the springboard for a subsequent drive on Leningrad. And uh, since it's very difficult to play, to win these uh, battles, you know, one by when uh, on the first try or on any given try, you need a bit of luck in some of them. For instance, this one. Uh, we are going to look at replays. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let me show you what we start out with. So this is one of the few scenarios where the Axis forces are numerically superior to the to the Soviet ones. So the Soviets have more armor, but ours is better. And uh, we the Axis forces also have an air attack, which I forgot to use. 
uh, please keep in mind this was the first scenario I ever played so I make some mistakes this is not ideal but I still managed to get the best uh, ending for the best result which shows you how easy it actually is and it is easy um, if we look at the map we can immediately see that <coughs> that we outnumber the enemy forces very heavily um, those little dots you see below the the units are their steps as the game calls them basically their their, their strength uh, numerical strength and it, this is crucial a uh, um, unit with a higher uh, amount of steps not only does deals much more damage but is less prone to suffer damage as well so um, so that's like crucial i don't do it as as i've said this is the first this was the first map i completed so i don't do any special tricks here in, in fact i i make a lot of small mistakes and um and the useless uh, um, actions take a lot of useless actions um the other thing you can see immediately apart so on the units themselves is that uh, some units have little um, iron crosses next to them no soviet unit has has decorations yet but later on we will see units with uh, one or two st uh, stars next to them <coughs> these denote experience levels and uh, so there are uh, practically four uh, levels of experience in the game standard like this unit here veteran elite and what we are not going to see very often green units which are far weaker experience is significant um, another thi thing this this game differs a lot from um, fans Panzer General or Panzer Corps is that there are very few types of units so we have infantry divisions <coughs> standard German infantry divisions there are no uh, other Axis forces here on this map only German forces we will see other countries represented here we have two types of tanks uh, or Panzer Divisionen um, so the, the lighter ones are a bit weaker but they have recon capability they're faster and uh, the other one is is uh, is very stronger so that's it they're all elite so um, that's basically it we have also elite motorized uh, motorized division and motorized divisions or oh, and um, they're they're excellent units they are much stronger than the standard german infantry so if you can see their uh, values not only are they much faster but they pack a lot of punch and they can also take um, more of a beating in other scenarios they become crucial they're almost as good as as uh, panzer units by the way so you can kind of exchange them you can think of them as as, as somewhat weaker tank units we also have the Totenkopf ss division uh, with us uh, ss divisions are usually um, motorized like this one they're also extremely sturdy and and uh, uh, they're almost always elite so um so they are a very important asset in in many scenarios uh, an ss division uh, division is better than any other unit you might have including panzer divisions now if you look at it then you will immediately see that <laughs> we outnumber and outgun and out experience the soviets very heavily um, this is a reason <coughs> why this map is so easy but i didn't win it for f for the first time because um, obviously this was the first time i played it and because the the the, the requirements for a brilliant victory are extremely hard on in most uh, cases so the way it works is that you have a set amount of turns to capture all victory points and we have three victory points here and if you capture them a bit faster then you get a major victory however if you want a brilliant victory then you have to ca uh, capture them even faster and not only that but each uh, each of these objectives have their own uh, has their own uh, set of, of has its own set of, of t uh, requirements so you basically the game tells you precisely on which turn you have to capture them so the first one we would have to capture well you don't tend to capture them in order but by turn four you would have we have to capture Daugav Pils crossing the Dwina at Daugav Pils is the quickest way for the Panzers to reach Pskov and by the end of turn five we need to capture Riv Riga Riga is the capital of Latvia. It is the home to the north, uh, to the headquarters of the Soviet Northwestern Front. And by the end of turn six, we need to capture Pskov, 
because beyond Pskov only the river Luga remains as the last natural barrier protecting Leningrad. Um, once again, this this uh, uh, is extremely tight if you look at the, the the distances. So we are racing against the clock, which is almost always the case, by the way, uh, if you want a brilliant victory. So we are not really fighting against these meager forces, but rather trying to uh, to overrun them as fast as we can. You really need to 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 do a few things right in order to reach the the final objective. As I've said, this map is very easy. Actually, you can play it without any, and you can win it without any ex previous experience. I kept restarting it until I got a brilliant victory. The first time I played this game, so I don't know how many times it tries. It took a few, but still, um, I didn't I didn't complete any other campaigns before I did that. Now the other thing that you can see is that some of these Soviet forces are dug in. Uh, you can see the little shovel icon. It means that they're entrenched. Entrenchment is is uh, is a very effective way of uh, raising the, the strength of a unit, both uh, uh, defensively and in a way to counterattack. However, if they go on an attack or if they move, they lose their entrenchment. So these are a bit sturdier, or actually much sturdier than they look. And of course, we would have some um, some terrain to take uh, to to consider uh, in most uh, cases however there aren't really any problems with terrain here the soviets are not holding the rivers which would be which could be problematic and uh, and yeah so there is nothing else to report very few s little swamp area which we we can easily bypass there is nothing there um Forests are uh, forests slow us down a bit, but they're excellent for uh, infantry units. Excellent for units that they fight better in forests, actually. Um, so just like on high ground as well. But we really don't need to worry about any of that. We also don't need to worry about weather, as you can see. I toggled the weather on, and there is nothing going on. So it's June. Uh, there, there is really. Uh, nothing to consider regarding the weather. In some scenarios, the weather is lousy, and you actually need to get lucky uh, to get some at least decent weather to get through the game because rain or, or snowfall can can not only slow you down but also has a very bad effect on supply as well as um, as taking a toll on your uh, ability to attack. So the defender gets a huge advantage by bad weather. But here it's not the case. We have perfect weather open terrain, uh, better units. So basically the only thing we really race against is the clock. The, the Soviets stand no chance in, in any encounter practically. And I've mentioned supply and I've mentioned that that's the most important part of this game. And it's true, it's not really important on this level, on this scenario. The way s uh, supply works is that um, there are set up supply source points on each map. Uh, you cannot change them. Uh, in very few scenarios, you can uh, raise the level, so there is the effectiveness, but that's about it. And uh, these provide supplies for your unit, obviously. Units, obviously. And if they're on a road, then that means that everything that that the road, uh, as long as the road is connected uh, to the source, then all the the road points are uh, at maximum supply, and the supply count only starts dwindling next to the road. So basically, uh, you need to to uh, to secure these supply lines to go on. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about what supply does in a moment because uh, we're going to see some effect on it. Later on it becomes crucial to master uh, how supply works, but for this uh, scenario you only need to, uh, to remember that this is a crucial road here uh, crossing the Duina and we need to <coughs> we need to secure it as fast as possible but otherwise not stop here and and drive on with our panzer units uh, towards pskov that's practically it now as i've said i did a lot of unnecessary not necessarily stupid but unnecessary moves here so let's see what happens so for instance this is not a bad idea uh, to to cut through here um, it's i don't think it's really necessary if you drive through the main drive drive along the main road then these uh, all these units will become cut off and lose supply. So, for instance, if we stopped right here already, then uh, these units in the south would no longer be in supply any time. And, and if we just left one or two units here to take care of them, in a couple of turns they would be completely useless. But, as I said, I was playing it differently back then, so um, that's it. And you can see how, uh, how truly str uh, overpowered we are. For instance, this standard uh, infantry division is is already veteran it has 
uh, let's see, um, it has seven steps, it contains seven steps, which I think is the maximum. And we are going up against standard Soviet units. Soviet uh, infantry divisions are, are uh, weaker anyway, so they, they, they have a less uh, lower combat strength. And they also, uh, we also outnumber them, so this one only has, this one has only has five steps with standard experience so they are trained but not experienced so basically what that means is that the only thing they can they can hope for is their entrenchment they can they can rely on is their entrenchment but um, with such disparity it's not really a uh, it's not going to work out well for them and this was a mistake this is not how you're supposed to do is to 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 roll here you should um, you either should r send this panzer unit off to the west or send an infantry unit where this panzer is now and uh, Either engage this mobile division or, or motorized division or not, um, it doesn't really matter. It's also going to be cut off from supply and, and when it uh, attacks, it's much weaker than when it defends. So this is not a clever strategy the way I took it. And you should race your uh, Panzer units to the north as fast as you can. But anyway, I wanted to clear out as much of the map as possible. It was, it was kind of a, the way, <coughs> it's kind of the way you, you normally play a Panzer General. So uh, my old instincts were still working here. And what happened here is um, basically we sent our uh, third motorized motorized division to the north and destroyed the only unit blocking the road with uh, entrenchment. Well, we didn't destroy it, but we uh, we made it flee. And sometimes units flee uh, in weird directions, uh, sometimes right into the arms of danger, so into, into uh, our better units, so allowing us to destroy them. It's, it's r totally random as far as I can tell. And of course, when they moved, they lost their entrenchment. Um, <coughs> once again, this is also completely unnecessary, but it's not difficult to do uh, to destroy these um, random units on the sides. Um, they they don't uh, they don't pose any threat to us whatsoever. Really, they they're they're they're, they're kind of fodder, and and we have better units. Now you would think that the the enemy tank divisions, Soviet tank divisions are, are superior, and obviously they are, but they are still quite weak. And uh, um, and they are no match for our elite uh, Panzer Division. And uh, I think it's time to talk about a little bit about special steps. Some units have special steps, as you can see by the little icons next to them. And these uh, are far, far superior to uh, any other units. Th basically, these are um, kind of attachments that uh, that act as a plus a step, so one extra step. However, if you destroy all other steps, then the spe special step alone cannot exist. So, um, and you can also destroy or suppress uh, standard uh, special steps as well. So uh, the way they work is basically they're an add-on and you can lose them, uh, you can have them suppressed, or uh, when well they, ca they can be just used in a standard way. There aren't many on this map. Uh, in fact, there are only three types. This is the one, the first one we see. It's a, it's a tank attachment. It's a uh, Clement Voroshilov one type tank for the Soviets, which is their, their basic tank. It's the weakest, still quite powerful, by the way. So this is by far the strongest unit they're fielding. Um, and our weaker Panzer Division have uh, recon capability, which make them go faster. And also they add um, extra uh, strength to them, so they are excellent. Uh, in the north, you see an NKVD unit, so a, a Soviet Special uh, Regiment, NKVD Regiment. Uh, NKVD units are, are much stronger, and they also dis discourage, well, not much stronger, they're, they're somewhat stronger, but they discourage retreat for uh, other units in the vicinity. So in some maps, on some scenarios, you, you want to take them out first, they're, they're a priority. The g this is very generous, they're very under strength, so uh, in this scenario, y they are easy to take care of, but at the very least, they're holding the river, so they're at least doing something useful, they're holding the bridge there. So Pskov is really the only objective that should be difficult on this map. The other two are extremely easy to take, even uh, uh, if you're going for a brilliant victory. And now you can see the, the uh, power of the Panzer, and I'm going to show that again. So uh, our elite seven step, I think it's seven, yes, yeah, seven step uh, first Panzer Division, it simply wipes out the, the 23rd uh, twen uh, tank division of the Soviets. 
um, as I've said, we 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 are much um, much stronger in any regard than this scenario. Um, now, the the Soviets later on uh, in the campaign, even already in this campaign, especially during the war, they will mm, start to match the Axis forces. And uh, after a while, already by the end of this campaign, you cannot rely on simply overrunning them. In fact, you are uh, you will you will be uh, so as an Axis. The Axis forces will be only a little bit superior to uh, the Soviet forces, and. Um, if they have special steps, or if they are entrenched, or if they're, um, they have a good position, or or if there is bad weather, then they can very easily be uh, far superior to to uh, the Axis forces. Uh, however, let's see what the Soviets do. They have supplies uh, well taken care of, so you cannot really cut them off except for m these units in the south and in the west. Everything else is well supplied as you can see so so um, they, d they don't run the risk of running, uh, running out of supplies. In, in a lot of maps it's a good idea to cut off their supplies and starve them out but here we don't have the time for it and it's not necessary and it's very difficult to do I anyway. Um, and what we can already see what the effects of, uh, of s bad supply or lack of supply does. So Supply is always checked at the beginning of uh, any player's turn because weather changes, uh, weather and terrain can change only at the beginning of uh, the attacker's turn, but uh, so so during every real turn. But um, supply is checked whenever a player gets to uh, get receives control of the unit and can start to play in each turn. And that means that you can cut up supply uh, for the enemy forces and it will immediately be felt. And if even if they reconquer the, their supply, if you can cut them off again, they will still be out of supply. So they need to hold the supply lines at the beginning of their turn and that's going to be key in some later missions. So anyway, as I was saying, this unit is out of supply, if you recall the supply ended around here somewhere. It's, it's not because of our pro uh, progress, they would have been out of supply anyway. And <coughs> the first time they're out of supply, th it only means that they do not get resupplied and they get a little um, um, uh, exclamation mark next to them, next to their uh, unit, and they're out of supply for one turn. Now, uh, units can sometimes get suppressed. We're going to see uh, effects of it. In fact, we already seen one that uh, this Panzer unit has uh, one suppressed uh, unit strength. A suppressed unit is extremely weak. Um, it's practically useless. It can still fight, by the way, so it's not completely dead. Uh, but uh, um, you you can basically uh, count with it as as it's being completely useless. Um, uh, completely suppressed units cannot attack anyway. So no matter how you run out of, s uh, of active steps, if your your steps are suppressed, your unit cannot attack. And uh, um, and yeah, at the beginning of your turn, if you are in supply, then you receive back either or of your uh, um, uh, suppressed steps to active, or some of them, depending on circumstances on the map, weather, uh, etc. Now, so the, the first thing that uh, running out of supply does is that the unit does not get resupplied, but otherwise it's not affected in any way. It's still as just as good. It can still move and attack. It can always move, by the way, but the, m but the movement is reduced if it's completely run out of supply. It, but it, you can never cut it off completely. You can never stop it in its tracks uh, completely. Otherwise, in the first turn, you're fine. So that's important also for later when we're going to risk, uh, we're going to run risks a lot of times to, um, to not have to not be uh, in supply one turn because we need to, you know, progress and catch capture <laughs> territory or points as fast as we can. This unit is also out of supply, and it has no chances of of getting back in supply. But the AI is still gonna try. So what the AI does now is it's trying to to block us. They it, it cannot. Uh, it does not have a chance against us militarily. So, uh, if if they if it attacked, then it then it would suffer worse uh, losses than if we attacked. So the defender always gets a, a bit of an advantage, and uh, <coughs> so the the best strategy for the Soviets here is to is to try to slow our progress by you know making us have to mow through them all the time. Later on, they will be able to mount effective attacks. So this is uh, not going to be the case here. And once again, they're just uh, bunching up units there in order to uh, in order to um, 
to slow us down when, when and if we get there. As I've said, this unit moved to the north. Uh, I don't know why it has no chance of survey. I don't know what I would have done with it, but uh, this way it lost its entrenchment and uh, it's not going to survive the next turn anyway. And what we have also seen that this motorized division, which is protecting the final uh, victory point here, the final objective here, has entrenched itself. Well, uh, when you do that, you lose some of your active steps to suppression. You cannot do anything else uh, during a turn when you entrench yourself, when you trench a unit. It's free, by the way, it doesn't cost anything. We could do it as well. Uh, but on that turn, the, the unit does nothing else but entrench, and it, it loses some of its uh, strength to uh, su suppression. So. Uh, if it gets it back, then it's uh, and and of course if you're defending, then that's uh, that's uh, absolutely the the great choice to do, the the, the optimal choice to go for, and this was the correct uh, answer here, so th or the correct uh, action to take here. Um, so it basically made its unit strength stronger. This one as well a bit at the cost of nothing, because by the time we get there, it's going to regain its steps. Now this is this is not the way to play it. So um, as I've said, that what you should be striving for is to make your panzer division uh, um, uh, able to run out into the onto the battlefield and and uh, um, and cover as much ground as it can. We've also seen something else. This unit overran the. It's so over and the, the Soviet uh, opponent because uh, it was so much stronger. Uh, uh, tank units in general can easily overrun. Motorized units not so much and infantry much less, but the, the disparity was so huge here. We have a, a veteran uh, uh, overstrength unit against, against an understrength standard uh, Soviet unit that sometimes you get to overrun them. It's always a percentage. You never get to have more than 90% chance. And I think uh, sometimes the game cheats because even with 80-90%, you regularly don't overrun uh, the enemy. The, the game gives you the, your chances and you still can fail them, so count with that. If you overrun them, then <coughs> that's what it is. You still uh, get to keep moving and shooting again because obviously, uh, I haven't told you this, but if you've played this game, this kind of games, then you probably know that every unit can shoot and move once. Uh, but movement is a bit stranger because um, it has a set of movement points that you can do in separate actions. So it actually would rather, I would rather say that it can shoot only once except for overrunning. So this unit will be able to shoot again. Uh, on the other hand, when you overrun, you usually uh, lose uh, steps to uh, passive, so to suppression, which is sometimes a good cost, so sometimes worth it, sometimes you need to calculate it, sometimes it's a really detrimental thing. Uh, in it, here we don't, it, it doesn't matter at all. Um, as I've said, this is something that's totally unnecessary, you don't need to cover ground. Um, in this game, it doesn't matter that the whole map is half red. The only thing that you need to go for is the uh, objectives, and and if you um, and if you reach these objectives in time, then and you can cover your supply routes, then you're basically all set. In fact, in a lot of times you want to cut off the enemy from supply and then overrun them that way. Um, it becomes easier after a while. So the tank, uh, this tank unit will uh, easily overrun its its understrength uh, opponent adversary just like here and now I make a mistake I made a mistake as I said this is the first uh, scenario I attacked this unit as I've mentioned before this is the most powerful unit the enemy has it has six plus one uh, steps including a special step with a KV-1 um, as you can see it easily deflected our attack and uh, caused us great casualties however we and we didn't cause it any casualties but we did suppress them and we got lucky and we suppressed this special step which is far more valuable from now on it acts practically as a as a uh, as a tank unit with only four now only two uh, active strengths the passive strengths add a tiny bit so they they also contribute to its uh, to its battle uh, capabilities but fighting capabilities but not much at all so it's it's practically done for if we can still attack it one more time then then it's going to be uh, well taken care of taken out and we do that we use our best unit to overrun it uh, it caused us no casualties whatsoever one step uh, was lost uh, one step was suppressed because of the overrun and this is a 
an important thing you have to keep in mind, always make your Panzer uh, units run ahead. That's also important for the Soviets, but especially for the Germans, for the Blitzkrieg strategy. Just send your Panzer ahead, don't worry about them, and try to secure the supply routes after them. Um, they can take care of themselves, uh, and as I've said, in the next route, even if they're out of uh, next round, next turn, even if they're out of supply, they can still act for one more turn. Uh, but you need to cover a lot of ground. So this was crucial that we managed to cover a lot of ground with this unit. Now we are just cleaning out this uh, motori mot motorized unit, and yeah, so uh, no chance against the SS, and. Uh, and now we're just progressing as much as we can. If you don't attack, you can move further, by the way, in this game. And uh, so that's what we, we get to do. And if you look at how this road goes, then you can see that what we want to capture is this bend. It's, it's, uh, it's a weird little thing here. But um, what you need to remember is don't stop at Riga with your tanks uh, or with your fast units at all. Just leave it to the infantry. They're going to capture it in time. Don't worry about it. This is not special unit in any way. Um, focus on Daugav Pierce because it's a bit further and uh, leave it there and the, the, the standard infantry will take care of it. Now another thing I want to mention is this, this unit has been out of supply for two turns so two things happened. First of all it lost some of its uh, active steps to suppression. Um, the, this is not randomized, but it depends on the unit type and experience level. So very experienced, excellent uni elite units won't lose, um, won't lose any or very few of the, their steps to uh, suppression. However, it also lost its capability to attack. So when it's been out of turn, f out of supply for two turns, a unit can no longer attack. It can still move, and obviously it can still defend itself at reduced value, but it can no longer attack, and you can use it in later scenarios. You will ha we will have to use it, because uh, that means that once, these, uh, once some units are cut off, then you can move your stronger units who were um, encircling them and move up some weak uh, units to, to, uh, to bar them off still. And... Uh, it doesn't matter if the enemy is much stronger than you, even with the remaining ac uh, active steps, because it won't be able to attack you, so you can block them practically with anything. And now we're just cleaning up this random straggler <coughs> unit, <coughs> that's also not really important. And now it's turn 3, and on turn 4 we need to uh, capture the Agaf Pierce, so I'm, so I'm correctly sending two of my units here, two uh, elite units here, two fast and elite units here. This should be more than enough. This, this unit is nothing special. The only thing it has for it is that it's kind of in a river band, so don't attack across river. Uh, the enemy gets a huge defense bonus. And also some attack bonus as well. Um, this um, means that we are going to cross at the bridge, and that's it really. I'm cleaning up this unit. I actually don't manage for some reason, which is really unfortunate. I know this unit is weak, but uh, this the Soviet unit is much weaker even. So, what happens now is we make the the dash towards the final objective. If you look at this road, it's all uh, uh, captured up to this point, up to the point of this 36 motorized division. So that means that we are still in full supply, which again is not really needed because. Um, we uh, we can survive one round, one turn without uh, resupply. And this is the crucial key to, to win here, even if you don't play it very well, like, like I, you know, I also didn't play it excellently in this time, even in this time around, this was like my fifth try or something. Uh, but you have to keep pushing, so leave Riga to the, to the slow infantry units. They will take care of it. Okay, um, I don't think you need to bring these units, and this is definitely unnecessary, there is no way uh, the enemy would have spawned there. Sometimes you get reinforcements, uh, but uh, um, and the enemy often gets reinforcements when you, so the, uh, the defender often gets reinforcements and they can only deploy them in specific set locations and obviously if that those locations have been captured they cannot de deploy the units at all so you can block some units from entering the battlefield overall. Um, but this, I don't know if they receive any further units but this is not going to be dangerous even if they do. And here 
this unit has completely run out of supply three or more turns it doesn't matter it's run out of supply it can move slower it can still move it can move slower. obviously it can no longer attack and it has lost all of its uh, steps to to for, for suppression i know it's it's not that visible here or not that uh, relevant here but for stronger units that means that if you keep them out of supply for three turns they become completely useless and uh, they can theoretically defend themselves and they can move very slowly but even your weak units will be able to mop them up very easily and that's the way to go in a lot of the on a lot of the maps anyway the the ai is re is re uh, organizing reorganizing its its uh, setup here and we start our turn by by eliminating that poor unit um and yeah and on the fifth turn we need to capture uh, Riga, so we still have one more turn to go and once again correctly we are making our panzer panzer units dash on um, dash forward because we need to cover a lot of ground to get to the uh, to capture uh, Pskov on turn six and out of this we have to capture this on uh, on this turn and this was a crucial uh, action if you if if you can tell if you couldn't tell so we breached it and uh, although it, you seen it was entrenched we 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 frontally assaulted it not across the river but directly and um, fortunately it retreated uh, this is also there is also a percentage wise chance of retreating which is uh, which can be a hundred percent by the way but usually uh, by then you will destroy them so when you get a hundred percent retreat uh, uh, stat stat then you can just you know count with them being dead uh, so now we captured it this is the first point we captured in this campaign and dog of is ours but our tank can still attack and uh, just you know to make sure that there is there is no there are no shenanigans we destroy the, that unit also we will launch these uh, units on to the north because obviously there is also supply here as well uh, the reason there is no supply on this on this uh, hex is because it's a it's a swamp and terrain slows down supply river also slows it. so any kind of terrain that is not not open will cost uh, more than one step of supply to go uh, to 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 uh, to lose basically including forests all right now this again is completely unnecessary there is no need for you to to clean the red clean the red, which is by the way not the color of the soviets it's always the the ai's color so the your opponent's color is always uh shown in red your opponent's territory is always shown in red and your your uh territory is always white all right so it's turn five <coughs> and we just did something on this map you receive two bombing runs uh, but you can only use one during a turn so basically uh, you can you, you can only uh, use them on two separate turns and we bombed Pskov which were, might not have been the best idea but this is our goal after all and we caused no damage whatsoever which is pretty common um, your attack can have negative modifiers your bombing attack can have negative modifiers unfortunately uh, this did not work out um, bombing is not as strong as you might think uh, you get you can have suppression and you can deal some small damage to units which can be a game changer but they will not like annihilate units so don't expect uh, your your bombers to to win the game for you <coughs> and now we're just rushing on uh, obviously this is our goal and this and this turn we need to capture Pskov so we move march on and assault this unit uh, it's out of supply for one turn but that doesn't mean anything because uh, it's still at full capacity uh, to fight so uh, we don't uh, that that little exclamation mark is not is not uh, relevant for us now this was once again not a very wise move w i crossed the river and attacked the unit from the other side of the river <laughs> which meant that it only lost two units to suppression and we lost uh, steps to suppression and we lost one step uh, permanently in KIA so don't do that uh, but this time our unit managed to advance destroy the two active steps and it still had one mov uh, movement points to leave which is crucial because now our other unit can destroy it overrun it and then enter and that the way we have captured the second objective 
as well and we can proceed to the north uh, there is nothing else for us to literally no other units either but capture uh, Pskov I'm cleaning this with the SS so that the other motorized unit can advance faster and uh, here I'm making a decision uh, to to cross the river at this bridge which is uh, what you should do the other uh, the other mm, bridge takes longer to cross you you still need this uh, supply route so you need to practically make a two-pronged attack you can either come from Daugav Pils to the north or you can branch off from from here uh, like I did uh, and we are cleaning out clearing out this uh, tank as well and since the tank retreated, we, we managed to send our strongest uh, unit across the, the bridge and immediately destroy this poor uh, infantry unit. Now this is totally useless, don't do this, don't, <laughs> don't waste your time and uh, energy on, on doing what I did. It's, it, I don't know, it looks fun to, to make the red disappear, but it has no consequences whatsoever, so, so don't do that. Um, now this, the Soviets are in a bit of a pickle, but they only need to hold out for one more turn before uh, I if if we want to have a brilliant victory and if they want to stop us from having a big brilliant victory. And as you can see, only these units uh, can participate in any meaningful way in the battle now. Um, it moved its NKVD unit here, which I don't think was a clever idea. Uh, what it wanted to do was uh, it to make it harder for us to reach the city. Um, so basically, it's not hoping that that it would uh, um, that it would stop our tanks, but it would it wants to delay them, and it cuts us off. The AI usually wants to cut you off. The AI is actually very competent in this game, but sometimes you can trick them. You can faint attacks, and it will and it will usually fall for them. So uh, what happened here is it wanted to cut off this unit, which is pointless, as I said, uh, they can survive one round without it. Although it does have one suppressed step, which it is not going to gain back, so at least that's something, I guess. Uh, I don't know why it pushed this unit here. Um, this, this unit would have been more useful behind the, the bridge, I guess, but whatever. Um, now we're using our second air attack. And this time we got lucky. We managed to suppress two steps, which is not very, not like not, not something game changing, but at least it's something for our money. Uh, it's free, by the way. It's just you know, it's something that it achieved at least. And our motorized uh, division managed to clear out the the Soviet tank <coughs> division. Unsurprisingly, we outnumbered, outgunned, and out experienced them very heavily. And this way, this NKVD unit's brave sacrifice was for nothing because our uh, our lighter unit managed to approach it and this is why I'm telling you that this uh, was a bad idea because this way uh, we can reach this unit with our other tank division and destroy it um, and thereby we free up the route for this uh, motorized division to cross the bridge and attack the city from the other side and it breaches it although although the um, and it breached and removed all active steps, so it's easy pickings for our Panzer Division, so it's definitely going to fall. And now we only need somebody to enter it, and we have one that uh, managed to overrun uh, previously the, the NKVD unit, and uh, thereby it still had movement points to spare. Um, so this is a way to win it, I would say. I'm not saying this is a very clean, clean one. Um, I was pretty inexperienced when when I first managed to beat it, this game like this. So um, the thing you need to look out for is this road and to also send your faster units towards Daugav Pils and to bypass Riga. That's that's the really the key of the, the whole scenario. Don't get bogged down uh, in with this city. Maybe send, if you really want to, maybe send one of them to attack it just once. One fast unit to attack it once and then split off. Um, and your regular infantry units will take care of the rest. Otherwise, uh, that's it. Don't get bogged down in the battles. Just try to gain as much ground as possible. And uh, that's really it. Nothing is really uh, a true adversary for you at this point, and in this scenario at least. So uh, things going are going to change. The Soviets are going to put up some a lot of resistance. And by the end of the war, they are going to be the superior ones. But what we will be playing with them by them. So that was Army Group North. Uh, I thank you all for watching. I uh, hope to see you next time. 
बाय बाय